Isotretinoin, also known as Accutane, is one of the most effective treatments for acne and the only acne treatment that can reliably deliver long-term clearance of acne. However, there have been important concerns about whether isotretinoin might be associated with mood changes or even suicidality. For those who are new to the channel, I'm Dr. John Barbieri. I'm a board-certified dermatologist and acne expert. In this video, we're going to break down the evidence about whether isotretinoin really does cause mood changes or not. The answer might surprise you, so make sure you watch until the end. Before we start, I want to make it clear that isotretinoin is not right for everyone. While it can be an incredibly effective acne treatment, it does have some important side effects like dryness, potentially joint pains, and other issues. This video is not intended to be medical advice, and it is important to work with your dermatologist to figure out whether isotretinoin might be the right treatment for you. Now that we've got that out of the way, let's discuss the relationship between acne itself and mental health. This is important because if we want to try and understand whether isotretinoin might cause mood changes, we first need to understand the potential effects of acne. Those with acne experience meaningful stigma in school, in the workplace, and in their personal lives. Multiple studies have found that those with acne have higher rates of depression and even suicide compared to those without acne, and that these effects are greater for those with more severe acne. The fact that acne itself is a risk factor for mood changes is really important. That means that failing to treat someone effectively for their acne might put them at risk of adverse mental health outcomes. And for this reason, an effective treatment like isotretinoin might actually be beneficial for mental health if it's so effective at treating acne. In fact, that's what we see when we look at the data. Multiple meta-analyses, which are a type of study that synthesize all the available evidence on a topic, have found that isotretinoins associated with reductions in depressive symptoms. In one of these studies, which looked at 31 different analyses, isotretinoin was associated with about a 40% reduction in depressive symptoms. Similarly, a meta-analysis of 25 studies looking at suicidality found that those who were treated with isotretinoin had about a 10 to 15% reduction in the risk of suicide compared to those treated with other acne treatments. Together, these results support that at a population level, isotretinoin appears to be associated with a beneficial impact on mental health. This is good news. It means that our expectation is that treatment with isotretinoin is going to improve mood compared to other acne treatment options. However, the full story is more complex. Isotretinoin is similar to vitamin A, and vitamin A toxicity is known to be associated with mood changes and psychological effects. In addition, vitamin A and isotretinoin are known to potentially affect the hippocampus, which is a part of the brain that's involved in mood and depression. And additionally, there are some fMRI studies that have shown that there are differences in brain activity among those who are treated with isotretinoin. Notably, there are several case reports of people who are treated with isotretinoin. They develop mood changes and mood symptoms. They stop, they feel better. Then they get started on it again. They develop those symptoms again. Together, these Evidence suggests that there is a biologically plausible mechanism by which isotretinoin might cause mood changes. And these challenge and the challenge case series where someone gets isotretinoin, they have mood changes, they stop it, they feel better, they get it again, they have those mood changes again. That's relatively strong evidence that there is a causal link between isotretinoin and mood changes in some patients. So how do we put all of this together? Does isotretinoin improve mood or does it make it worse? Well, my interpretation is it does both of these things. On an individual level, there are rare people who develop meaningful and important mood changes on isotretinoin. But on a population level, when you treat thousands of patients with isotretinoin, on average, you improve their mood because you're improving their acne. What this means is when it comes to deciding whether to take isotretinoin or not, the expectation should be a reduced risk of depression or suicidality compared to other acne treatments. For the right individual, we shouldn't be afraid to prescribe isotretinoin. And in fact, those who have depression or other mental health symptoms, that might be a reason to use isotretinoin. However, there are rare individuals who develop meaningful mood changes from isotretinoin, and we must remain vigilant and keep an eye out for when these side effects arise so that we can address them appropriately. Unfortunately, right now, we can't really figure out who's at risk of having these side effects or not, which is a really important area of future research. 
Finally, it's important to consider that the relative risk and benefit of isotretinoin are going to be influenced by the severity of the acne and other available treatment options. For someone who has more mild acne, the risks of isotretinoin might outweigh some of those benefits that we're discussing. And as we develop better treatments for acne, we might want to use those options instead of isotretinoin. Now, I sometimes hear a narrative that dermatologists are trying to hide the bad side of isotretinoin so that we can prescribe more of it. And this really couldn't be further from the truth. We'd love to have better treatments than isotretinoin. It's not a medicine that's fun or easy to use or prescribe. However, the reality is that right now it's by far the most effective treatment for acne and the only acne treatment that can reliably deliver a lasting clearance of acne. So for the time being, this is what we have. I'd love to have better treatments that we can help our patients with, but isotretinoin, when used thoughtfully and for the right patient, can really be a positively life-changing treatment. I hope that you found this video to be a helpful and honest assessment of the risk of mood changes with isotretinoin. If you have, please pop that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Your support really means a lot to me and it's what makes these videos possible. In addition, check out some of the other videos on our channel where we go more into how to prevent side effects from isotretinoin and where we describe other treatments for acne. In addition, ask me your questions about acne in the comments below. Until next time, see ya!